Hey, in this video, I'm gonna show you everything you need to set up an Angular project and host it for free. Everything from downloading software to deploying it to a server. So we're gonna get right into it. Step one is probably something you've already taken care of, but we're not going to take anything for granted here. We need to install Node.js. Now, if you're anything like me, when I got started, I installed Node.js way back and I don't even know when because some tutorial on some website told me to install it and I didn't even know what it was. Node.js is there to help you run JavaScript on your computer and it comes with a handy tool commonly known as NPM or Node Package Manager that lets you install dependencies for JavaScript projects. So before I take you through the installer, let me just show you how to check which version you have. We're going to be doing everything through the terminal, so go ahead and open an instance of that. And we'll just do node version. You can see I've got 12.18.3, which is actually already up to date there. And we'll do npm version 6.14.6. Now, if I didn't have Node installed, I would go to nodejs.org and I would use the installer on there. Step two is to install the Angular CLI, the command line interface for Angular. So to do this, I'm going to do npm install g at angular slash cli. There we go. Step three is use Angular CLI to initialize a new project. Before you do that, make sure you're in the directory that you want your project to be in. So I'm going to go into my documents, programming, and then we'll do ng new. I'm going to call my project Angular Playground, but you can call yours whatever you want. Would you like to add Angular routing? Absolutely say yes. Which style sheet format would you like to use? I'm going to use SCSS, but again, you can choose based on your own preference. And while this installs, let's go ahead and talk about step four, which is installing a text editor. The text editor that I prefer to use is Atom. I like it because it's very simple, but ultimately um, I like it because I'm super accustomed to it. I also have a lot of recommendations for plugins that you can use with Atom. So go ahead and download Atom. And we will check on Angular. It has initialized our project. Let's go ahead and use Atom to view the project contents. The Atom installation, by the way, is really simple. Just drag Atom into Applications and you're done. Let's go ahead and take a look at Atom now. You'll have to go up to File and Add Project Folder. Okay. Uh, so quickly, we'll take a look at what's in here. We've got this folder labeled E2E, which is for testing. We've got Node Modules, which is for the dependencies that we download using the NPM. We've got our source folder. That's going to be where all of our code is. And then we've got a bunch of other configuration files, which uh, honestly, you're probably not going to ever have to touch, except for maybe package.json, which is used for listing all of your dependencies and the versions. So let's take a look at what this looks like. We'll do ng serve open. And so this is my Angular app. Now, the next thing we would want to do is start building something specific to what you want to design. Speaking of building something, step five is installing Atom packages. Now, I'm going to glaze over this, but not because it isn't important, only because the packages are really supplemental to the text editor and your coding practice. This is not a coding video. This is a video about setup and deployment. But what I can do for you is just list my recommended packages with the foremost being Atom TypeScript and Angular Snippets. The rest of those are just my personal recommendations. They're independent of Angular. They just help make Atom a better text editor. And to download them, it's very easy. You just go to the Packages Settings menu and you can install from there. Just remember to reset Atom after you've installed. So the next thing we're going to do is move into Firebase. Step six is get started with Firebase. Now, you don't have to use Firebase. Personally, it's a product that I use and I can give you two good reasons why. One 
Because Angular is developed by Google and Firebase is a Google product, the two work together very nicely, and two, it's totally free. Or at least I should say, it's free until you start to have the kind of web traffic that you need to start paying for. So to get started, you'll need a Google account. Uh, you can sign in. So when you land on the console, the first thing you'll need to do is create a project. Your project will need a name. So I'm gonna call mine Angular Playground. And accept the Firebase terms. Google Analytics is something you're going to see when you log in to your Firebase project. Uh, I have always kept mine turned on. And then we'll have to agree to some terms. When you're all done, go ahead and click Create Project. Now, one of the things I really liked about the Google Firebase suite is uh, the tools, the tutorials are really easy to understand. They feed it to you as you go along. You'll see that as soon as this setup is completed, it says my project is ready and then it's going to tell me exactly what I need to do in order to continue. I'm going to click on web and we'll register the app with a nickname. Let's call it set up Firebase hosting, register the app. Step seven is to install Firebase tools. You're not going to need any of these scripts. You can go ahead and click next because now we need to install the CLI for Firebase this time. So that's npm install g Firebase tools. Um, if you open your terminal and we already have that Angular app running, we can close out of that by hitting control C and we'll paste that line. So npm g Firebase tools. There's one more thing we need to do. We need to set up our database so that we can initialize our project. So click on the database tab and click create database. These options are the rules for when you set up the database. It's very easy to switch it over to production mode or to change the rules later on. And then we need to pick a geographical location where the data is going to be stored. Okay, now our database has been initialized. We can go ahead and set up the project on our computer. Step eight is to initialize your project. Make sure that you've set up your database in the previous step before you move on to this one. We'll say Firebase init. Make sure before you do this that you're in the directory uh, for your project. And Firebase offers several services. I'll describe each one to you very briefly. So database is actually the real-time database. It's their older database structure. I would not recommend that. Instead, I would recommend Firestore. So press space to select. Firestore is their redone version of the real-time database. Functions, that's going to be all of your cloud functions. If you think you're going to be building a robust app, then cloud functions is something you'll definitely want to implement eventually. I'm going to go ahead and add it to the project. It's just going to create some folders and files where I can add the cloud functions later. Hosting, well, we already know that we want hosting set up. Storage, so storage is, imagine a user who logs into your app and they wanna upload a picture or a movie or some text or something. Um, anything that's not just saved on the database, but actual files that could be saved and downloaded later on, that's storage. I haven't actually made an app that uses storage yet, um, but I can say that all of these features can be added at a later time should you wish to. And then emulators is a new tool. It's actually in beta. I haven't used it yet, but this is something that I'm going to want to play with. I've got to say though, setting up the emulators is going to require several extra steps. And if you really just want to get started and start playing, go ahead and skip this part. Please select an option, use an existing project, create a new project. We're going to use an existing project. And I logged in as a different user, so I have multiple projects. Uh, go ahead and pick the only one that you've created so far. Mine is Angular Playground. Next, it's going to ask us which file we should use for rules. Those are the security rules for checking authentication before a user tries to access any data in your database. You can go ahead and use the defaults. That's what I've always used. What file should be used for Firestore indexes? So. Again, you can go with the default here. 
What language would you like to write cloud functions? Because you are making an Angular app and Angular is written in TypeScript, I highly recommend that you use TypeScript here as well. That's going to provide consistency between your cloud functions and your, uh, your app. Do you want to use TSLint to catch probable bugs and enforce style? So that's going to be checking for errors, absolutely. Do you want to install dependencies with NPM now? Sure. What do you want to use as your public directory? Okay. This might be the only one where you want to change the name from the default. When you build files in TypeScript for Angular, those files will be saved to a folder called dist. So what I'm going to do to keep things simple is keep my public directory the same as uh, the folder where my build files are going to go. So dist. Configure as a single page app. That's one of Angular's strengths, is making a single page app. So say yes. Firebase initialization complete, yay. Step nine is to deploy the project. There are a few commands that we need to do before we can deploy. The first is to do ng build. That takes all the TypeScript files and builds them as JavaScript files and HTML files. And then before we deploy it, to our website. Uh, let's do a test. We're going to do Firebase serve. And we can see that it's being served on localhost 5000. So we'll go over there. And we're seeing this, which is not what we expected. We expected to see our Angular app. Uh, let's take a look at why that is. So inside of my dist, folder. I've got index.html. That's actually this content. And then Angular Playground. This is where all of my uh, files were built into. So instead of being placed into dist, they were put into the subdirectory here. If you need to make changes later, you're going to find those changes can be made inside of your firebase.json file uh, inside of the directory for your project. So let's open up Firebase.json, and down here, hosting, where it says the public folder, I'm going to add that subdirectory. That way I don't have to move those files after I do ng build. So Angular Playground is where they're being put. So we'll save that, and let's try this again. We'll do Firebase serve and reload the page. There we go. This is our Angular site. Uh, so this is looking good. It's a good thing we did the Firebase serve so we could preview it before we deploy it. So because we like that, we're going to close out of that again, Control C, and now we can do the real thing. So to deploy, the command is very simple, Firebase deploy, however, I'm going to include this option, only hosting. And that's because I haven't done anything with my cloud functions yet. Uh, so I'm just going to deploy the site itself and we're not going to deal with cloud functions right now. And that is a success. You will see that there is a hosting URL. This is a live website. And when you navigate there, there's your Angular site. So that is it. That is every step to take your Angular project from installation to deployment. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions or you'd like to see more content from me, let me know in the comments. I make videos every week. I'm on a big push for like Angular and app development. So if you're into that kind of content, consider subscribing. And if you do, I will see you next week. Thanks for watching.